Every time I get into the Porsche Taycan, I'm completely blown away by just how capable a car it is and how very good it is at most things, except fly around a track. But if you are using it on the road, there's one area that I find a little bit frustrating. Hey guys, hope you're well. In this video, I want to be discussing what I think is the biggest problem with the Porsche Taycan. We'll get onto that in a bit. But first up, we need to set the scene a little. I've had this car now for quite a while, so I've gotten to know it, gotten to understand it. It's an EV, my first EV, so that was the biggest challenge. Getting over that desire for a combustion engine car. I've still got some, but yeah, this is definitely an EV and very much behaves like one. It's a totally different driving experience. Some things I wasn't really expecting with this car. The first up is just how versatile it is. It's amazingly versatile, so comfortable around town. And some things have been a real eye-opener, like driving around in London, no congestion charge, no ULES, extended parking depending on where you go for free, the ability to charge for some places in free, for free. But some things I wasn't expecting, like just how much these things have tanked in value. I understood they could tank in value because it's a Porsche, a four-door Porsche, just like the Panamera, but they really have had a rough ride at the moment. Not much you can do about that. You just got to hang on for the ride, the financial ride, not the car ride. So what I think is the biggest problem with this car, it's not the range, it's not the speed, it's not the comfort. All of these things are good enough. Range maybe not so, but certainly the comfort, the car, the drive, really very very good but one thing one area in particular really lets this car down and it's the brakes yes the brakes it's not that they're not good the brakes in this car are carbon ceramic brakes so they really have some serious stopping power like you wouldn't believe this car stops enough to have your eyes meet with the windscreen really really powerful and we got to experience that the full capability of this car stopping power at Silverstone and that was also a great time to try the brakes in general so we've got to understand just why the brakes are no good in this or certainly could be better and the reason isn't the power that those carbon ceramics offer it is the fact that this is an EV so also provides you with regen braking. Yes, regen braking is a key component of any EV and it's kind of necessary because if this car didn't have regen braking, you would lose your, your limited range, your very limited range, even more quickly. Porsche claim this car will add about an extra 30% of range to what you've got in the tank of electrons just using regen so it's kind of necessary to top up the battery now the regen brakes in this car are significant they offer 290 kilowatts of energy being pumped back into the batteries under full load braking which is impressive to say the least it is a significant amount and i believe four times more than what tesla can offer who've been around for a longer time in the EV space for sure. So that is a lot of regen braking. There are times as well when you only use the hydraulic brakes, the brake pads on those carbon ceramic discs. And that is when you come to a stop under five kilometers an hour, about three miles an hour-ish, there or thereabouts, the motors aren't turning fast enough to generate any back EMF, any regen braking. So you naturally transition to pads when you get when you come to a stop and I think they do that pretty well although it's not consistent sometimes I've been a little bit caught out in that transition the car rolls a little bit more than you'd like maybe cold carbon ceramic discs etc and you get a little bit closer than you'd like to the car in front so that's caught me out a few times as well also this car it doesn't do one pedal driving unlike some of the competition 
Tesla, for example, and I don't like one foot braking, I just don't. I, for me, an EV already detracts from some of the driving experience, the soul, and just using one pedal, you might as well be in a milk float. I like being able to stamp on the brakes when coming to a bend or needing to stop or going around a track. It just gives me a better sense of control, a better sense of transition from throttle to brake. And this car does a pretty good job, but where this car struggles for me is the transition between that regen braking to hydraulic braking. When I had this car around Silverstone, it was good, great acceleration and very, very powerful brakes, but it was not consistent in any way, shape or form. I find the brakes on this are not consistent. It does a kind of different thing every time, I feel, that you're progressively braking harder and harder, and that can be because of the amount of braking it's sending to the front, to the rear, how much regen braking you're doing. There's a lot of factors to take into consideration when this car is coming to a stop. Now, don't get me wrong, regen braking is great around town. It's very smooth and you really do hardly notice coming to a stop. It's so smooth. And of course, the great thing as well about regen braking, and we've got to be frank here, is quite simply, it's saving on brake wear which can get very expensive when you consider carbon ceramic discs. Also, you probably didn't know this as well, but yes, the ever progressive march of the Euro emission standards, so Euro 7, which is coming in 2025, is going to be the first Euro 7 standard that doesn't just take into account emissions, it takes into account brake dust emission from the car, yes. So this car, EVs in general, are going to do very well, especially those, pretty much all of them, that do regen braking. But it is still, for me, the transition from regen to hydraulic that in this car is not smooth. So if we take a look at the dash here, you'll see that when you've got this green, uh, green meter here, which progressively moves around that dial to show you how much regen braking you're applying, when that recuperation regen braking green dial is round to the max level there, you cannot do any more regen braking. And that is when you, be, you get on to the hydraulic braking. So if you're braking hard, you'll go beyond the capability of the regen brakes and hit the hydraulic brakes. That for me is not is what's not consistent actually. So if you see here, you've got the green meter, it moves gradually around here as we increase the brakes and then all of a sudden, we move on to hydraulic brakes and the brakes get stronger and stronger. So when you're bringing this car to a rapid stop from 70 miles an hour, you're very quickly going to go beyond the regen braking. Now I understand you could be looking at about two megawatts of energy consumption, not electrical, but heat and friction generated under normal braking, bringing this car to a stop. It is significant, a significant level of braking to bring such a weight to a stop. So you kind of do need to get onto the pads as soon as you can to really provide that full stopping experience. Now, during that time, I understand you will also be using the full regen capability as well. So the car kind of is always pumping regen and putting energy back into the brakes. And 290 kilowatts, as I, as I said earlier, will provide you with just two seconds of braking with an extra 700 meters of range, which is significant, right? So it's not too bad. But here's what I, I think is missing from this car. And during the track day at Silverstone, it was very evident. And for me, I would like the ability to completely disable regen. Yep, call me crazy, but just to use hydraulic braking every time. For me, it would just provide you with a little bit more consistency from a braking perspective. It would get rid of the regen. And you know, to be frank, when you're going round a track, you're not going to be putting that much energy back into the batteries via regen because I think most of your stopping is going to be on the pads. So that's just something to bear in mind. And for me, this car would be a lot better if, if they'd really thought about that as an option, the ability to just turn off regen, which would be great. So, and I have to say a huge shout out to Martin at Visual Aesthetica who 
just randomly bumped into out on this video whilst doing some of my drone shots. Uh, clearly a far more talented and skillful drone pilot than I, who offered to do these shots for the car, which I think look absolutely amazing. So uh, huge props. His link will be in the description for his Insta. Please do follow him. And uh, yeah, thanks Martin, it, it's amazing. That is it for this video. A quick one, nevertheless, but it is, for me, the biggest problem as a driver in the Taycan. Yeah, the regen braking. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay well. See you in the next one. Bye for now.